big concern and it's been consistent since about 2011. So the reason that this is so important to me is because I have friends and family in the military, I'm sure many of you do also, and this is something that they've been working on for a long time, but we're really not seeing as many decreases in these numbers as we would like. So my goal now is to become uh, more familiar with protective factors that we can increase and make it so that there is less suicides and make it so that this number is not surpassing at least combat rates, but hopefully not happening at all if we can. So out of these uh, suicides that happened in 2016, 61 of these were Air Force alone. <clears throat> Now, one of my theories of why this isn't decreasing, why these numbers are being so limited, is because suicide in general has a very individualistic perspective to it. If you look at like the medical models and things like that, suicide is seen as like, oh, that person has depression, they need to get antidepressant medication, they need to go to therapy, and it tends to be very concentrated and very much in a vacuum. And as systemic thinkers, we know that that's not how this works. So what I'll be borrowing from today is the Interpersonal Psychological Theory of Suicide. This was developed by Thomas Joyner down at Florida State University. And this gives us more of a systemic framework to think about the ways in which suicide uh, ideation develops and how suicide then becomes a feasible outcome for people. So the two that I want to focus on particularly are thwarted belongingness and perceived burdensomeness, as those are two that we see a lot. So how many of you guys here, when people are talking about maybe thinking about suicide, they feel isolated, they feel alone, they feel like people don't care. Um, you hear a lot of those messages, right, from the clients that we see in our offices, or we also hear the other side of things, the perceived burdensomeness, that people feel like, um, I'm just kind of dragging everyone else down, I don't want to be a burden on other people anymore, those kinds of messages, do those sound familiar? So according to interpersonal psychological theory of suicide, thwarted belongingness and perceived burdensomeness both make up like the motivations behind suicidal ideation. So those are some of the thought processes that people start to develop that make it so suicide becomes something they start to think about in a way that makes it so that I just want a way out. I just want a way to not feel these things anymore, to not experience these things anymore. And then this last one, the capability for suicide, is when the individual has been through either psychological or even physical pain to the extent that suicide becomes a realistic possibility for them. So people that have experienced trauma, people that have PTSD, uh, our service members that have been deployed multiple times even, all of this can contribute to capability for suicide because they've become almost accustomed to living in a state of emotional or physical pain and suicide then becomes a possible outcome to kind of escape that pain. <coughs> Oh, and I should mention there in the uh, very middle, as we can see here, it's really the culmination of all these things together that that's when we start to see attempts that are getting made. So if you know this, um, people with suicidal ideation far surpass the number that actually um, will have a suicide attempt or a suicide completion. And so that's why I really want to look at how can we prevent way earlier on the line looking at thwarted belongingness, perceived burdensomeness, decrease the motivation so we never get to the point that they're actually thinking about making an attempt. <coughs> So I have a couple of hypotheses for this data that I'm working with currently. And that is that some of the ways that we can culminate better relationships is with the family and then at home. Um, sorry, with the family at home and then with the work relationships with our service members, particularly for the Air Force and stuff, the data set that I'm working off of. So one of my hypotheses is that positive relationships at work, so with, uh, I'm sorry, at home with spouses, with children, and at work, so with supervisors and with peers, will decrease depression since we know that depression and suicidal ideation are very highly correlated. <coughs> And then deployment difficulty for families, or the amount of difficulty families are experiencing when their loved ones are deployed, um, I would say that that would be positively associated with depression because it's then creating more of that sense of burdensomeness that the service member might already be feeling. So I would assume that, that would be positively correlated with depression and therefore positively associated with suicidal ideation. Which brings me up to the mediation, that depression would fully mediate all of these associations by my particulars, the family and work relationships, deployment difficulties, going through depression, then going into suicidal ideation. So for this, I use the Community Assessment Survey. This is a secondary data set that's collected by the Air Force. It includes uh, 34,909 active duty service members. So this is a massive sample, and I was very, very lucky to get permission to use it for this. Um, so I was able to condense it down. It has reserves, it has spouses, it has active duty. Fortunately, it doesn't have dyadic. Ooh. But it does have spouses, active duty, and reserve, so I'm able to look at different facets. For this specific project, I just looked at the active duty uh, component to make it so that I could see, okay, what's going on for these ones that have been deployed maybe more recently and are going through this regularly. So this included about 8,000 women and 26,000 men. The, this was slightly an older sample for service members. I don't know if you guys are familiar with active duty, but they tend to be pretty young. So this was a little bit of an older sample. Almost half were between 26 and 35, so it's a little different than other active duty populations in that regard, um, although this is Air Force and that comes with some different populations than other uh, branches.
marriages do. <clears throat> About 71% of these service members were married. Most of them were married to civilians. And at least half of these, uh, this sample had at least one child. Most of them had about two. So as I said, this is secondary data analysis. I use structural equation modeling with mediation with depression as that mediator. I followed the model of fit indexes recommended by Hugh and Bentler. And because it was a mediation model, I used bootstrapping. And that was uh, suggested by Hayes. So the variables that I have are family coping, family deployment difficulty, parenting satisfaction, work relationships, depression, and suicidal ideation. So each of these except for suicidal ideation was used as a latent variable in this model. Suicidal ideation was a single item um, that just asked about frequency and thoughts of suicide over the past 12 months. The others all had different indicators and they asked, so family coping was, uh, what was the perspective of coping of the family? Are we able to get th through things together? Things like that. Um, deployment difficulty was the service member's perspective of how their family maybe struggled or had some difficulty while they were deployed. And that was on most recent deployment and previous deployments. Parenting satisfaction asked about satisfaction with the relationship with one or more children and what the quality of the relationship they would assess that to be. And then work relationships specifically asked about peer relationships and supervisor relationships and what the quality of that would look like. <clears throat> and then depression asked about the normal uh, depression things, lack of motivation, lack of interest, oversleeping, things like that. And all of these um, had their different indicators. All of the indicators followed regular model of fit indices, so they were a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, or above. So they were all consistent and hung, hung together very well. So these are some of the descriptives for each of these with the ranges off to the side so you can get an idea of what kind of the averages for each of these variables look like. So overall, um, suicidal ideation and depression were pretty low. Family coping, parenting satisfaction, work relationships were pretty, pretty high. And then family deployment difficulty was kind of in the middle. So people were kind of mixed on how they felt their families coped with this. So for the model itself, you can see that um, the reason that family coping still has a direct association with suicidal ideation is because it was not fully mediated by the model. So even when depression was put into the model, it remained having its own consistent direct path. Um, so that's actually kind of interesting because that means it's all, all just going through depression. It has its own kind of protective factor against suicidal ideation on its own. But all the others were fully mediated through depression. Satisfaction with parenting and work relationships had the most significant effect sizes, which is really interesting to me in that it does mean that how, their, um, how the service members are experiencing their home life and their life at work are playing a big role in whether or not, I'm sorry, um, family coping and work relationships had the biggest effect sizes. So that idea of how they think things are going at home and at work do have either a protective factor or a risk factor um, depending on how well those things are going. So if we can improve that family coping and make it so that their family is better able to address challenges as they come up, if the service member feels like they're able to talk to peers about issues that they're experiencing, or if they can go to their supervisors about things that maybe are not going so well at work, or if they're having difficulties or struggles, all of that has the potential to influence if they're experiencing depression, which then is very highly associated with suicidal ideation. <clears throat> um, and I controlled for gender and age in this model. So deployment uh, difficulty for family was still significant, but it had a smaller effect size than the other two, as did satisfaction with parenting. So these are my indirect effects. These are what basically, like via depression, how do these uh, different predictors have an impact on suicidal ideation via their impact from depression? So <clears throat> Out of these, we still see family coping still had a pretty strong association with suicidal ideation via its impact with depression, which means that it kind of is having its own association with suicidal ideation with and without depressive symptoms, which I think is really interesting because it does show the protective buffer that family coping has the potential to um, play in this role. Satisfaction with parenting and work relationships both had um, slightly smaller betas, so they were a little bit less significant uh, as far as like the role they played, but they still do have the potential to be protective buffer against the development of depression and therefore the development of suicidal ideation. And then we see the family deployment with uh, difficulty. It was a positive association with depression and therefore indirectly positively associated with the development of suicidal ideation. <coughs> okay, so I've kind of covered those results. So basically the discussion piece and the implications for this is that we're really starting to see more about how relationships play a role in the lives of our service members. And how family coping especially is something that can serve as a really big protective factor and how can we improve that as family therapists. So we know that systemic things are important. We know family is important. We know that being able to go home and talk about how is work stressing you out or how can the family kind of better support the service member. We know that those are things that probably we should be working on. So then how do we get that information out there? 
So being able to increase the knowledge about things like this, where we're saying like, look, this is the research we're doing. This is the way that we know that families impact coping and therefore can decrease possibly more of the deaths of our service members by making it so that they have more of a buffer, make it so that they are able to talk with peers, make it so they're able to talk with their supervisors and be able to kind of relate more about some of these things that might be stressing them out to decrease some of the um, depression that they might be experiencing or to let their family or peers know about what does depression look like in a service member so we can intervene a little bit earlier on.